Welcome to Hack the File. I'm Michael Lopez. And um, today's video is going to be um, the next video in the Ethical Hacking Series book. Um, this one is Capturing Traffic with ARP Spoofing. This one's going to be fun, so enjoy. All right. So here we go. So this video is going to be capturing traffic with ARP spoofing and pay no attention to the man behind the curtain uh, no Langley the Wizard of Oz so in our last video we um, did a basic test of the network of our virtual network we had set up with uh, who am I and then we rebooted rebooted the Metasploitable so if you didn't see that video, watch that video, but we're going to go on to part one of this series and network fundamentals. Now, ARP spoofing uh, is going to basically go through and they're going to, we're going to, they're going to teach you a little bit about what, um, how the packets work. Um, in um, you know uh, data transmittal and stuff like that so um, we're gonna go ahead and read this because it's gonna have some reading about um, what what is ARP spoofing what's packets and stuff and like I said if you're if you're interested in hacking and you don't know about this stuff you're gonna have to read about all this stuff and and uh, do some research on it. It's, you know, it's, I mean, you don't have to be a pro. Or you don't have to go get CompTIA certified and all that stuff. That's all whack. Um, just read a book. Go through the book. Practice the book. If you're interested in computers, you should pick it up fast. Right? So, you know, and, and stuff like that. You know, I've got a degree in, in cyber operations and resilience and stuff. But um, it doesn't mean that I've... I know everything about computers and stuff and you know if somebody likes computers and they've been messing with them for years you're qualified just go in there and and uh, study and <clears throat> pick up other books and test yourself and stuff like that on, on and learn about how how packets work and stuff so but this is what this is gonna do is this is gonna do a basic um, I would call it like a recap on on what packets are and all that ah, coffee. all right so here we go anyone who walks into a coffee shop and connects to its wi-fi network can intercept and view others unencrypted web traffic using a technique called arp spoofing which exploits a vulnerability in the design of the address resolution protocol, the ARP protocol. In this chapter, we explain how ARP works, describe the steps of ARP spoofing attack, and then perform it ourselves. So this is what's cool. How the internet transmits data. Before we can discuss ARP spoofing, we need to first understand the internet's general structure. This section describes how the internet transmits data through a higher, higher, hierarchical God, network using packets, <laughs> using packets, MAC addresses, and IP addresses. Okay, so your your MAC address is going to be your. Now it doesn't have anything to do with uh, iMac. I mean, yeah, Macintosh or Mac OS or anything. Your MAC address is going to be your, your address for your physical device. Okay, remember that. And your IP address is going to be your your uh, your address for. Uh, okay, so it'll it'll go through explaining it more in here, but it's basically uh, how it communicates with with your network, right? That's that's your that's your uh, like your gatekeeper, your network IP address, <clears throat> how to communicate in your network, whatever. Anyways. So packets, all information on the internet is transmitted in packets. You can think of packets as an envelope that contains the data that you want to send. As with the postal service, 
They always use the postal service in this, you know, as an example. It's funny. These packets are routed to their destination based on specific addresses. Figure 2 1 shows some parallels between envelopes and packages. So, this would be how the, you know, U.S. Postal Service uses it. So, they say it's, it's from Daniel. It's going here to Africa. And then this one's to Jesse. It's from Daniel. From Daniel in Africa going to Jesse in Antarctica, right? And so, the MAC address would be your, like I said, your physical your your physical device address so Mac would be that you know it's from that's showing where it's from right so the physical is is gonna represent the person right your 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 laptop physical person would be your physical laptop in, in comparison right your IP address is gonna be like where it's from like I said your IP address uh, is is uh, basically your designated um, address on your your with your internet service provider or, your, or whatever and that would that would be the equivalent to your address physical address like where you're at in the country and then where you're sending it to would be your destination mac would be you know it's the same thing as saying okay send it to this guy or this device and then it would say over here right so it's, i mean that's fairly simple that's but a lot of people don't know that when you get into cybersecurity, or if you're interested in cybersecurity, um, you're gonna have to understand these these terminologies. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna do a lot of uh, learning about them. So, um, but this does a brief overview of it, which is fine. Okay, and and you know even doing this, you'll learn a tremendous amount, right? And then you're gonna get hands-on experience here in a minute too. And then if you're following my videos. You have a lot of hands-on experience setting up a virtual environment, you know, and you're not going to get, you're going to get that in school, right? So when you go to school, the first virtual environment you set up, you're, you're basically, uh, you're, you're going to set up a VM, like one VM, right? So this, this video right here gave me more experience than I did in, in like one class, right? I had to, you know, I, all my combined classes know, but one class I took um we set up a, a vm right which is it's an invaluable experience you know how to do it but um and i was you know i was using that to to um use tools like like you know cali and all that stuff but i didn't set up an, a network right or an environment so if you guys are following my videos or whatnot or you're following this book you just did something that one class in college uh, didn't do right i mean it just you set up one environment one virtual machine but you've set up a whole little environment little network so that's cool right so um you know from this book you're you're if you follow it like we're doing now you're gonna learn a tremendous you're gonna learn i would say more than somebody in college in one class right but not you know but if and if you keep going and doing this let's say four or five six seven books you're gonna have more than i would say and you do it for many, many, many years. I say you would be on par with somebody with a degree, or or even surpass them, right? I would say. Anyways, from the address, from the addresses section on the envelope containing two critical pieces of information: the name of the person sending the letter and where they live. Similarly, packets have a source uh, media access control MAC address. That's what it's called, MAC media access control. In other words, that's bad. it has nothing to do with media, but that means you know it's it's your physical address. That represents the machine sending the packets and a source IP address. That represents where the packets came from. Other similar fields known as packet headers uh, represent the packet's destination. Okay, and then so when you get into packet headers and stuff, that's when you're you're talking about the when the, the actual uh, transmission of the data you're gonna start. Well, it's going to probably talk about it here, but that's when you're messing with the the uh, OSI model. Anyways, so in your in your attaching basically where it goes. So, okay, so let me let me just for the layman terms or let me just put this in perspective. I saw a video on this. It was great. And I forget what it's called, but 
you watch that video and it'll make you understand basically what what the internet is right and I'll see if I can find that video and then I'll post it for you guys to watch it's a great source of, of information so basically um, the internet was created by or the, the, the yeah the internet was created the concept of it was created by I think it was the Department of Defense or I, I can't remember anyways but it was because the military was was trying to f figure out how we can transmit data um, during an attack or whatever or, or if a, a phone line went down uh, we could still get the data to the destination so if you look at telephones it's a one wire right from one place to the other if one telephone pole breaks or whatever then you, then you lose transmission from one right so what you can do is you can hook them up in parallel but if they all bust or if one buses or whatever uh one one pole breaks or something like falls down during an attack or a bombing in military times or whatever you lose your you lose uh, ability to communicate okay and um and so what the what the or whatever so what the military was wanted was a way to if that happens they still get their they still get their transmission so some dude i can't remember came up with the idea to break information into packets into pieces little pieces and then and then attach um information on them which are headers and, and stuff like that and, and other things to attach to it to so could tell it where it's going so that's why you have an address and an ip and all that right and you have headers and, and, and it's telling you where it needs to go and so it, it's so in pieces so like so in other words if if one piece is going and let's say the transmission line is down okay it'll go and reroute to another place so that one piece you'll never lose the whole transmission uh all together right so that one piece will go and it'll find another place to get to its destination okay and so as long as there's something open on that interconnected network still it'll find that route and get to its uh, destination one packet at a time or one piece at a time right and so how does it do that you have to add other information on it saying uh, okay so this is part of this this is part of this this is going here this is going you know what i mean so then it each piece will find its way and when it gets to its ultimate de destination it get it gets put back together right in order and that's what those all that other stuff lets it know like what what part of, of the information is and all that so so it's, it's brilliant right okay so that's that's brilliant and that's basically how it works and there's a video that explains it better than that and and so okay so now that you know that okay we'll, we'll continue so mac addresses your laptop contains a network interface card NIC card okay that allows it to connect to wi-fi routers so this said mac addresses okay this card has a unique address called a mac address that identifies your machine on the network when the router wants to send your computer information it labels a packet with your laptop's mac address and then broadcast it as a radio signal huh see i'm learning more stuff every day when the router wants to send your computer information it, it labels the packet with your laptop's mac address and then broadcast it as radio signal. All machines, oh, okay, it's reset router. All machines connected to the router receive this radio signal and check for packets. MAC address packets. MAC addresses to see whether the packet is intended for them. MAC addresses are normally 48 bit numbers within a hexadecimal. For example, your hexadecimal, right? Okay. IP addresses. You probably already know that IP addresses also identify machines on a network. So why do we need both IP and Max? Well, networks consist of hierarchical, hierarchical. Man, I can't even say that word. <laughs> regions similarly to know how some countries are split into states, which themselves contain cities. IP addresses follow a structure that allows them to identify a device's place in a larger network if you move to another coffee shop your laptop will be assigned a new ip address to to reflect its new location however your mac address would remain the same 
Okay, that, that's you know that we, we, if you don't understand that clearly, I mean, it, you know, go back to the you know the the mail system uh, analogy and stuff, right? Comparison. That you know that makes sense. An IP4 address encodes the network hierarchy information in 32-bit numbers. This number is typically represented in four sections separating by dots, such as 192.168.3.1. Each section represents an 8-bit binary number. For example, 3 in 192.168.3.1 actually represents an 8-bit number of 0000011 dot. Okay, this is stuff that you, you know, this goes a little deep into into uh, what's going on here. Um, this is binary language, right? Binary code. So um, that's electrical, right? So, I mean, you, you could memorize this stuff, but this stuff you don't really have to memorize right now, not for this, okay? Unless we're, unless we're using something like that. The IP addresses in the same region of the hierarchy also share the same upper level bits. For example, all machines on the University of Virginia campus have IP4 addresses like 192.143.xx. You also see this written in class classless interdomain routing CD, CIDR uh, notation as 128.148, you know, whatever, indicating that machines are on the same upper 16 bits when that slash 16. Or for the first two numbers, because IP addresses follow a particular structure, routers can use parts of the IP address to decide how to route a packet through the hierarchy. Well, I'm getting used to that word now. Figure 2.2 shows a simplified example of the hierarchy of the routers. Okay. Here's your Wi-Fi router and modem. You all know what a Wi-Fi router and modem is. Your laptop 1, laptop 2. Bob's Coffee LAN is connected to this router, connected to another Comcast, what the heck, Comcast customer. Tier 3 local ISP Comcast, Tier 2 country ISP Comcast, Tier 1 global ISP AT&T, and that's their provider, right? Global Data Center LAN. So this is the provider. Google Data Center Alien. Bob's Coffee. Oh, this is Bob's Coffee Alien. So Bob's connected to his Wi Fi modem in his coffee, whatever. He's got two laptops connected in his little network. Okay, that's his that's his his little network that like we created a little network. This is his Bob's coffee little network. He got two laptops connected. And then that this is another customer. So Comcast, he's he's using Comcast, okay, and tier three local ISP Comcast, right? So this is this is Comcast local ISP. So ISP is a is is, is basically a fancy word for your uh, connection, wireless connect or whatever, yeah. And then, and then uh, tier two, he's in a, and then it connects to a different country connection, Comcast. And then tier one is the global AT. So AT and T owns Comcast, and has these connections for, for the customers. And then he's connected, and he's connected. And there's probably another customer, another customer. Another, and this is the DS. Oh, okay, here's your keys. Okay, so here's your. These are routers, wireless routers, right? Um, that AT and T owns, so they can connect their customers together. And this is the DSLAM, right here. And I have no clue what that acronym stands for, um, but I'm sure it's going to tell us right now. <laughs> and then AT and T owns them so we can connect to it and then their Google data center so Google data center LAN I don't know why this is on here that's weird but I guess that it's able to access the Google data center at and I don't know if whatever anyways that's I don't know what the hell that was about but this is showing you how it works 
Okay, so it's going to tell us what the DSLAM is. Uh, figure 2-2 also shows a digital subscriber line access multiplexer. That's what that stands for. Digital subscriber line multi all access multiplexer. A DSLM allows signals associated with inner traffic to be sent over wires originally intended for cable television. Ah, that's right. I remember that. The D, that's why it's AT&T and Comcast, Comcast, because they used to do cable, right? Comcast does cable. The DSLAM distinguishes between internet and television signals, which is why you can connect to both your television and router at the same cable socket. That's right. Let's let's use the coffee shop example to follow a packet through the network hierarchy. Imagine you're a coffee shop in San Francisco and access the following web page. Let's, let's, let's access that web page. Look, this is the web page they want us to access. Computer science. Years of change computing. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's get out of that. This page is hosted on a web server with the IP address of uh, this, 128.140. On the first leg of its journey, the web request passes through your laptop's NIC, which gets your MAC address which then sends it to the Wi-Fi router in the coffee shop. The router then sends the web request to the DSLAM, which I, if you're using co coaxial cable or you're using Comcast that uses coaxial cable, then that makes sense. But most internet providers are using uh, fiber optics and stuff and fiber cable and and even landlines, right? So it's using this as an example, but it's not all going to pass through the DSLAM. So that's kind of not careless, but if it explains that, it, like I just said right now, then it might be right. But that not all stuff go to this through this. Okay, not all transmissions go through this because this is changing. This is de deciphering um, uh, packets or whatever through cape coaxial cable is what it said or something, right? Because Comcast had already the infrastructure set up through their cable, and then they they wanted to um, use that to transmit internet to make money, right? Because cable's dead basically, and so. But a lot of people use fiber optics and stuff, and I don't know if they use this too. I'm sure they use something. I, I who knows? You gotta look that up. Which forward the request to a router owned by the internet service provider? ISP, like I said, that it's a fancy word for who your your like provider, like Comcast. Comcast router then compares the IP address to a list of prefixes until it finds a match. For example, it might find a match for the prefix this, indicating that its connection to that section of its hierarchy. As the request is sent through the hierarchy, the matches will become more specified. For example, the IP address will need to match this and then this. Once the packet reaches the lowest level hierarchy where there are no more routers, the router uses the MAC address and the packet to determine the request's final destination. So that's very interesting. It So when I said that the packet tries to find its path, no matter if those those physical uh let's say land but your your whatever you wherever it's communicating on is broken um that's how it does it it uses a hierarchy right there are no more routers the router uses mac address we refer to the lowest of the hierarchy as a local area net network oh okay yeah i don't know because of all the machines in that level are connected through a single router now that we have a general overview of structure of internet, we can discuss attacks that takes place in the, lo in the lowest level of hierarchy. All right, that makes sense. All right, hold on, let me just drink a bunch of coffee, so. All right, ARP tables. Now this is the whole attack. We had to do all that to set it up so you understand what where the ARP tables come into effect, right? Because you're going to be like, ARP table, what is that? So ARP tables. We've established that 
after a packet has reached its destination in the local area network LAN, which we've set one of these. Well, actually, yeah, we've set one of these up, but the, yeah, anyways, never mind. The network uses the packet MAC address to to determine its final destination. Well, how does the router know the MAC address of the machine with the IP address 128.143.67? This is where ARP is useful. Following ARP, the router sends a message called a ARP query to all machines on the network, asking the machine with the IP address 11 to reply with an ARP response containing the MAC address. So this is where <laughs> this is so cool. So it has to verify, right? Your 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 ARP your ARP uh, query. Okay, is a protocol. ARP is a ARP is a protocol. Yeah, ARP should be a protocol, right? That um, checks to make sure, right? Like I said, that you're uh, that you're uh, getting a request um, from the right machine, right? And so the router will then store this mapping between the IP address and the mac in a specific table so what we can do think about that so if it's saying okay yeah or hey are you the right one somebody can go in there and, and spoof it and say yeah that's me right and not be the right one and then that's the hacker <laughs> called an arp table so okay so once it verifies that it is the router will then store this mapping between the ip address and the Mac in a spe special table called a ARP table. By storing this information in the ARP table, the router reduces the need to issue ARP queries in the future because it, it says, okay, that's him, all right? We don't got to do it again. We already know it's him. We we'll have to check to see if it's him again, right? And it keeps it in the ARP table. The quick version, Mac addresses identify who you are, IP addresses identify where you are, and ARP tables manage the mapping between who you are and where you are on the network. In a ARP spoofing attack, we pretend to be someone else, right? That's what you said. So that's actually cool. You can you can trick uh, the transmission protocols. That's what I'm gonna call them, right? Uh, in thinking that you're some you're a device that you're not. So you know, so the ARP query is gonna say, "Is this you?" And you say it, it maybe because it, I mean I mean so let, let's look at it like this so it's, you, you you're not a physical person in that realm but you're a physical person on the end of that device right so so literally it's just saying that if your device is you but it's you behind the device right and then you get and they're gonna end this and you're gonna you're gonna trick it into thinking that you're somebody else you're another device or a person behind the device or even just another device with no person behind it right so um it's pretty cool okay so just stick with this book arp spoof spoofing attacks okay an arp spoofing attack consists of two phases this is where it's gonna get fun during the first phase the attacker sends a fake arp response to the victim case yeah yeah so so the so the person that's trying to uh connect or or trying to uh do something transmit data or whatever he has to get a fake response back saying that you know like like oh yeah it's working right or else he's gonna think something's wrong right stating that the attacker's mac address maps to the router's ip address this allows the attacker to trick the victim victim into believing the attacker's machine is the router. Oh, okay, okay, hold on. This allows the attacker to tr to trick the victim into believing the attacker's machine is the router. Oh, okay, okay. So, so he's strike that, reverse it. So yeah, so no, it's the fake response is he's he's thinking that he's connected to wherever he's trying to connect to, but he's connected to the attacker's machine. So he's tricking them, which is awesome. During the second phase, the victim accepts the fake ARP packet sent by the attacker and updates the mapping in its ARP table to reflect the attacker's MAC address. Now maps to the router 
now maps to the router's IP addresses. This means that the victim's internet traffic will be sent to the attacker's machine instead of the router. <laughs> the attacker's machine can then forward this information to the router after inspecting it. So it's basically a man in the middle attack. You're you're tricking an attack, uh, uh, somebody that's that you're attacking, into thinking that everything's okay and they've connected to their router. But it's they. Okay, so I have to do a new video. Um, let's read this last sentence again. This means that the victim's internet trap will be sent to an attacker's machine instead of the router. The attacker's machine can forward this information to the router after inspecting it. So yes, yeah, so it's basically a man in the middle. If the attacker also wants to intercept internet traffic intended for the victim, uh, the attacker must also trick the router into sending the victim's traffic. Therefore, the attacker must create a fake art packet indicating that the victim's IP address maps the attacker's MAC address. This allows the attacker to intercept and inspect incoming internet traffic and then forward the traffic to the victim. We can explain the ideas behind the ARP spoofing attack with a simple diagram shown in figure 2-3. Here, Jane, the attacker, tricks Alice, the victim, into sending her mail to Jane. So what, so what would a what okay so if you were if you were hacking and you were performing espionage or something or you wanted to spy on a victim or you you know uh, let's just okay let, let's say that you you found somebody that's got a lot of money or you um, um, found somebody that you want to hack for personal reasons or whatever okay by setting up an if you could get a up ARP spoofing um, attack on them, you could you could theoretically see everything they're sending, everything they're receiving um, be, uh, before they do, or and then after they send it, you can see it before their their recipients get it, right? So therefore, that's why people stress that when you're dealing with passwords, account informations. And all that stuff, um, you have to be secure, right? Because this is all in, un unencrypted, right? Um, but you have to be secure. See, you have to, you have to have encryption, and you have to. You know, that way, they somebody can't do this, right? And um, but don't ever, you know, I mean, I mean, you have to practice safe um, protocols and security, right? But somebody could can read your emails can know everything about you right and 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 then hack you more but with this first initial hack would i would say this would be like a reconnaissance hack right um i mean you, you can do more with it too especially if people are giving information in their emails hey mike what you know hey what's your email address what's your bank account number and they're sending through emails i've done that I've sent people, somebody, uh, um, you know, part of my social and all that through my email to my aunt and stuff like that, and, and that's not good if somebody's hacked you, right? So you don't want to do stuff like that, okay? Okay, who is the postal? Who is the postal worker? Alice, right? So, so, so she, she's the victim. I am the postal worker, Jane, right? And then, so. Jane reads mail, then forwards it. So she reads that mail, and she's like, oh, man. Sends it back to the postal work. Sends it to the postal work. Thanks for the mail, Alice. So she's basically a, a person in the middle, or a man in the middle attack, right? Man in the middle, person in the middle, girl in the middle. Who gives a shit? And <laughs> um, so this, will, this could work vice versa, too, right? So this is what ARP spoofing is. It's powerful. I think that's why they, they, they do one of these like first. So ARP spoofing attack is an example of a man in the middle attack because the attacker places himself between the victim and the router. See, that's what I just said. Man in the middle attack. Person in the middle. Right. Okay. Performing an ARP spoofing attack. Now we're going to do it. And it's going to be fun. 
So let's perform an ARP spoofing attack, and I'm sure it's just going to be a basic attack, right? And, and none of this even tells you um, that, you know, you won't, probably won't even be able to do this if they've got um, firewalls and antivirus, I mean, you know, security is in place and stuff like that, but it's okay. This is going to show you how to do it if, if somebody, like on Metasploitable or something, right? It's, and, a lot, you know, system is not safe. Okay, let's perform an ARP spoofing attack. First, you must ensure that you have started the PFSense, Kali, and Metasploitable virtual machines before you begin this attack. Now, let's see if we did. Okay, I left mine running, so I don't want to use up a lot of power. Metasploitable's running. Kali's running. PFSense is running. Okay. <laughs> Visit chapter one for instructions on doing this. We already did this. So let's install the tools that we need to, to perform the ARP spoofing attack. Open a terminal on Kali Linux virtual machine. Install the DSN no DS D sniff tool. Sniff. The default password for Kali Linux machine is Kali. Start by running the sudo uh, dash i to become a root user. You also need to update the app get package manager by running app get update. Okay, so this is something that you need to remember when you're using Kali um, Linux is the um, the sudo is super user do. So sudo basically I say sudo because everybody says sudo, but it's probably sudo minus i app get update now this what this does is updates your your uh cali box app get install ds sniff All right so let's let's run that okay and it's and it's like you said it's cali We're gonna open up a. I can just open up a root. I mean, it doesn't matter. But okay, let's open up a terminal up here. <laughs> We're gonna do sudo. I said I can't type for crap. I don't know. Minus i. I don't know what that is. Right. Then you gotta enter in your password. Okay, now I got root. See how I went from Cali at Cali? Now I'm in root. I could have probably just went here and then typed in my password. And then look, got root. So, I guess that's what that is. Okay. We're gonna do this because I wanna see app oh app get and then update. Okay. So now we're gonna update the uh shoot. So app did app <laughs> App get update. App dash get update. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna run that. So what this is doing this is updating everything on your, I think on your Kali Linux box, to make sure you have everything current so we can download the, the next thing the the D sniff. Okay. You gotta remember that app get update. You use that a lot just in case you something's not working when you try to down so what we're doing is we're downloading tools okay and updating tools and and you know that app get update uh, allows you to update and get tools 
I don't know. Anyways, well, let's let's look at the next one. App get installed DS no D sniff. So that's how you install stuff. So let's see. I should be able to, you know, uh, I should be able to install um, D sniff. I should be able to install this now that I updated this, right? Do you want to continue? Yes. So now it's installing this D sniff tool. And apparently we're gonna use this. Okay, there are services installed on your system we need to be restarted. So I'm gonna go over to yes. And I'm gonna have to restart some services apparently. And you always wanna read everything. I mean, especially like this ain't Windows. Kali Linux, you have to well on Windows you gotta read everything too, but in Linux, you gotta read everything, or else you're not gonna understand what you did wrong. <laughs> They're gonna do a lot of stuff wrong. Okay. So this looks like it installed. It's a done Kali menu. Okay, so now let me go to the next thing. We'll move this over. Okay, the D the D sniff tool contains several useful tools for intercepting network traffic. Now, if you want to. The more you practice this, the more you'll know which tools to use. Okay. But you can write this down in your hacking book. So if you have a little book that says you know, to hack, put ARP spoofing attack. Underline it. Um, put sudo dash i app get update app get install DS sniff. Just write that down. Put another line. Put um you know, tools, DS sniff, and then put definition, and then write that down. It's used to intercept network traffic, such as, such as ARP spoof. Okay, put another line, and then start do this. And that way, if you are, if just in case you want to reference it, you're like, what is that tool again? I mean, because nobody is doing this constantly, right? Um, unless you're. I mean, let me rephrase that. I meant to say. Um, you're not doing this constantly unless you're doing this constantly <laughs> like for a job or you just love to do this constantly on your own right but most likely you're gonna do this once twice three times but when you get through this book you're gonna have done it enough but um, so you'll know how to do it but um, you're not doing it you're probably gonna do it on a regular basis and this and if you do then hey do it then then you'll then you'll have it burn in your mind what D sniff does and, and all this stuff but um, unless you have a great memory I would write it down right but I'm not gonna do that cuz uh, I'm just gonna do this right now right but then I'll know of it and then I can do it later but if I want to reference this I've got the book so I can open the book and look at it right and go, oh that's where that was but so I don't know just writing stuff down is good Okay, uh, the DF, the D sniff tool contains several useful tools for intercepting network traffic, such as ARP spoof, a tool that executes an ARP spoofing attack. So this this D sniff has a bunch of different tools in it. Okay, we must discover the IP addresses of other machines on the network to spoof them, that is, to pretend to be them. Run the net discover tool using the following command sudo net discover so i'm gonna do that and i hopefully uh it doesn't have all it doesn't um i don't need to put sudo if i'm in root do i that's i don't have to put sudo that's another thing it man i can't type for crap So, okay, that's awesome. Okay, 
All right, I can do that. So it's only showing what's on my little network that we created, which is awesome. So when you're in root, you don't have to put sudo. Remember that. So I'm just gonna. I just did net discover, right? And it's giving me the MAC address and the IP of my little network, right? The little network we created, um, which is awesome. So, and that's this little network, right? So think about this. This is how cool this is. NetDiscover gave me, since I'm on the network, and that's what they don't, they don't, they're not telling you here is you need to be able to get on their network. So um, you need to be able to get on somebody's network uh, before you can discover everything on the right. I think, I don't, I don't know if that's accurate, but I'm, I'm assuming so that's what they're not showing you here, right? But I'm sure they're going to show you later. So now they're just showing you how everything works, right? And then later on, you can put it all together and go, ah, that's what we're doing, right? Um, Because you can't just, I mean, you could probably net discover out in the middle of nowhere on any network and then see what's on the network, right? And it's easy to get on networks. So uh, let's say I went to, so this would be great for, hotels right so they say don't get on don't get on free Wi-Fi anywhere and if you do be careful because theoretically I can go to like the a hotel and then they give me the Wi-Fi password I'm on their network then I can run this net discover and I can see how many uh, people's Mac and IP addresses I discover and then I, theoretically I can run this this spoof attack but you don't want to right but think about that if you need a practical place to to run this spoof attack um you can go to local coffee that's why i said local coffee shop right local local coffee shop owner that's where they give examples of that is because they're usually giving you access to their their uh, network which is their internet right so coffee shops anywhere over there I mean, mcdonald's um you know, you can go sit down in McDonald's and run this and you'll get other you'll get everybody that's connected to there that's not safe, that doesn't have like um um security on their on their laptops or whatever. Yeah, laptops. Because they're probably bringing laptops. Um you're gonna get their MAC addresses and IP addresses and you can run this spoof on them, right? So theoretically, so this is this is hacking, okay? This is, you know, so everybody goes, well, you know, I, that's not, you know, I don't know if that's really hacking or I don't know. How do you really do this? That's how you really do it. You have to get access to somebody's network. Now, later on in this book, I'm going to show you how to get access to other networks that are not allowing you, you know, that are not easy to get access to, but it's going to show you how to get access to those next. So this is just a first little, you know, if you read this book, you'll get little clues like, you know, uh, uh, Joe's coffee shop. You'll get little clues on what, on what. What they're doing and they'll even tell you like you know you know stuff but they can't tell you go to your local free wi-fi network and do this you know because it's illegal this is illegal right so this is why this is called ethical hacking so you know and, and it's, it's kind of odd that a lot of these books you know they're teaching all this stuff for people to do this and they're teaching it in such a practical way that anybody can learn how to do this um but you know but it seems like it's, I mean, it is really difficult if, if you don't know um, what you're looking at, right? Like, IP, you don't know what an IP address is, you don't know what a MAC address is, but it's telling you what it is in there. So, you know, just use this wisely. These videos are for, for people that are interested in, in ethical hacking, not not criminal activities, right? So, um, but it's really cool, okay? So that's how you would use this. I mean, that's not what they're telling you in here. So I'm trying to tell you clearly on what's happening, right? So now I've got these addresses, right? And one of them is my firewall. One of them is metasplotable. Okay. So it's going to teach me what NetDiscover is. The NetDiscover works by scanning the networking using ARP queries. 
It issues ARP queries to all possible IP addresses on the subnetwork, and when they and when a machine on the network responds, it records and displays the machine's ad, MAC address and IP address. The Net Discover tool also infers the NIC manufacturer from the MAC address because all MAC addresses must be unique. A central board in the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineering (IEEE) issues manufacturers a range of MAC addresses in order to ensure uniqueness. Your your scan should detect two machines on the network and generate the output there. Okay, so what this is saying is this Institute of Electrical Electronics Engineering is is a board that issues unique MAC addresses, right? And they needed to do that because each it's just like saying each person has a first, middle, and last name, right? That's how you know that that's actually them. So this is what we got. That's exactly what we got, right? So that's great. And there's their Mac. See, it says at Mac address. This is their. This is saying this device is my metal supportable. I mean, whatever. And this is my firewall, what? Because we know that that's the two that's it's seen. But this is their physical address. This is like saying this is Paul. This is Mike. This is where they're at. This is where he's at, right? This is your. This is the IP. See how it says IP? Boom, boom. This they're saying it's one. The LEN is something different. And this is the Mac vendor or, or host name. This is the host names. So that could be anything. The actual IP address return will very, very depend on your setup. The machine with the lowest IP address is normally the router or LEN. So yeah, so this is a lower address because it's, I mean, it's, it's got, you know, this one goes one one oh one. This is just one. And um, so that's your, we know that that's usually the firewall, right? Or the router. We refer to this IP address as the router's IP for the rest of this chapter. The second IP address belongs to the metasplotable machine, our victim, which we refer to as victim IP. This is the victim IP, right? Once you discover both machines, End the scan by pressing Control C. Oh man, I'm still scanning. So let's go on here. Let's see why I'm still scanning. I didn't. But... Oh yeah, so it's still C Control what? P? Control C. <laughs> or Control Z. Control Z gets out of the whole thing. If you... So sorry, sorry. I stop scanning, right? Did you see that? So what it did was I pre pressed Control C and it stopped scanning. It was scanning for a long time. It was only finding these on that on that uh, LAN that we set up because there's only those on there right now. So Control C got it out of it. Boom! Put me back in root. <clears throat> stopped the scan, but left the information there. Okay. Um. Next, you'll need to allow the Kali Linux machine to forward packets on behalf of other machines by enabling IP forwarding. Make sure that you're root user on Kali Linux and then enable IP forwarding by setting the IP forwarding flag. So we're going to use this command to enable IP forwarding, right? So we're going to what we're gonna do is I'm gonna type this in because I can't see it right so echo and I'm not gonna go over what echo means you're gonna have to Google that and there's another thing I would do is I would you know the more you practice um, uh, command line with Kali Linux so Kali Linux is heavily command line right Windows took away a lot of the command line functions. And so you can use command line on Windows, but um, you just click on stuff, right? In Linux, uh, you can, it has some of the click on stuff and stuff like that, but most of it, like installing stuff, running applications, is done primarily on command line. And that's what this is. And command line, um, you can practice it by doing stuff like this. Or you know, and then or you could pick up books that's gonna teach you um, about what what Kali Linux command line. They'll teach you what Echo is and all that stuff. Okay. But um, apparently this command um, is 
gonna set up um, IP4. IPv4. It's gonna set up um, a forwarding. See, in that. So echo one dash proc system net. Now, if you're in cybersecurity, you already know all about all this. If you're getting into cybersecurity, which my videos are for both intermediate and beginners. Well, yeah, if you're, I would say, I used to say it was just for intermediate, um, but I'm look, I'm now I'm starting to figure out that my videos are for beginners and maybe intermediates, but more for beginners. So, and if you're looking at this and you don't know what you're doing, um, practice the command line. You're going to have to do a lot of practicing with command line because you need spaces. You need, you know, and sometimes, you know, reading it, it's not, you're not, you know, the spaces matter and stuff like that. So that's just experience you're going to have to get on your own by doing command line, a lot of command line stuff. Um, so it looks like that worked, right? So I set up a forwarding. Um, now that you're, you've enabled IP forwarding, that's what I just did, you'll need to trick the victim into, into believing you're the router. Do this by issuing fake ARP replies stating that your MAC address maps to the router's IP address. Figure 2.4 shows an example of this attack. Hey, 10.0.0.3, the router... Blamely Mac is blah 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 Kelly Mac. This would actually be a cool shirt. <laughs> like put this on the back of a shirt. That would be awesome. Actually, I might do that. <laughs> so yeah. So this is this is your box, and you're saying, hey, this is me. The internet. Um you're saying that you're this, but you're actually this. Okay, I will update my table. And so the Metasploitable server that's meant to be exploited, okay, is saying that you're, all right, you're this. Oh, wait a minute. You're this. And so this is, so this is its MAC, right, IP address. It's saying that you, which is this guy, from here, okay, not from here, but this is where you're actually at, but you're saying that you're from here on this, and so he's saying, uh, why would he keep the same name, that's weird, anyways, well, yeah, because he has to, because you're on that physical machine, so that makes sense, so, um, my PF sense firewall is got its own shit. Um, so, I'm sorry, <laughs> got its own. Uh, oh, that's what he's doing. All right, let me read this again. He one zero. Okay, so one zero one three is not him. It's him. So, so the hacker is talking to. The metal spotable server and saying the router is one zero one. So it's saying this router is him. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Instead of saying it, you know, it's him to send it to the router, it's saying send it to me. So the router here, send it to me. Oh, that's cool. And then the 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 server is like, all right, and he says, so whoever's right here, which is this guy, is this guy, but that's not him. See, he, he's really over here. So that's cool, man. That's awesome the way to look at this. So that's how it works. It just tells them it's it's tricking them. You can generate multiple fake ARP replies by running the following command. ARP spoof 
I, Etho, Victim IP, Router IP. But do we want to do that? The IT flag specifies the target. Yep. And the I flag, a dash I flag represents the interface. Your NIC supports several ways to connect into the network. For example, WLAN represents the wireless network and Ethos represents the Ethernet connection. In the virtual lab environment, the machines are virtually connected by Internet, so you'll use Etho for the interface. Your NIC supports several ways of connecting it. For example, okay, okay, yeah, we already did that. In the virtual lab environment, the machines are virtually connected. Okay. We'll use Ether for your interface. In the coffee shop environment, the inter the interface would be set to WLAN. So instead of Etho, it would be WLAN because see how they're saying in the coffee shop environment, they're basically telling you to, that that's where you would be able to do this. Is <laughs> so you got to pay attention to all this. You know, this is literal. The internet coffee shop, but you know, the, the interface would be set to WLAN, which is wireless. The following snippet shows the results of running the average spoof. You'll need to generate multiple fake replies to, to ensure that the table is always updated with the incorrect information. The tool will generate multiple packs for you, so you'll need to run it once. Oh man, this is so awesome. Because it's literally giving you the information that you need, except you're going to change these, okay? Because these are different on yours. But if if you look back, this is the member he said that uh, they said that the lower IP is your uh, is your router, and the higher one is your IP address. So that's what it's saying. Victim IP, and then the router. So you're going to need both of those, right? Router's IP. Because over here, you were saying that you were this guy right here, and that's the router. And then you need its IP, which is this. All right, wait a minute. Yeah. Or your victim's IP router. Anyways. So this is what it's going to look like. It's going to give me an ARP. Okay, so let's do that. Let's enter in our information. Uh, okay. So this is our information, right? Let's, let's, uh, I'm going to leave it open because I want to know. I want to. I don't have to put sudo because I'm in the root command. So I'm just going to go ARP. Spoof. Dash. I. E. E. Yeah. E though. No, it's not E though. It's E. It's E zero. I don't know why I say E though. I T. Dash T. Okay, so we're going to enter in the. First, we're going to enter the victim's IP address. And that's going to be our metasplotable, right? So that's the second one. Because remember, the, the shorter IP address is your usually your firewall. So we want to do the metasplotable victim. We want to metasploit it. So we're going to go. We're going to go. Uh, 192 dot. One six eight dot one dot one hundred. Just gonna go in here so you guys can see one six eight dot one hundred, right? Okay. Dash. I mean space. I'm gonna enter in the routers. IP so the, the firewall okay and so that's one nine two dot oh, 
Let's see if that works. It's gonna ARP spoof. Couldn't ARP for host 192.168.1.100. What I do wrong? There's always something that I yeah, did wrong. Oh, I did that twice. See, notice that I did that twice? I put 192.100. So, you just press up, and this is the victim's IP. So, that's what it should be. Right? That should work now. Because this one's .1.1. .1. Okay, wait. One nine two one six eight. One nine two dot six eight dot one dot one. One nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one hundred. Okay, this then this stuff might be messed up. So let's oh, crap. Let's see what we did wrong here. Oh, crap. Is that E though, or is that E zero? We'll, we'll check that too. I don't need to put pseudo. Arp spoof. Arp spoof. Maybe it was with this. I couldn't afford it, so that's Ethel One. Oh, I did him backwards. Victim's IP is the bigger one. All right, I did them backwards. So your victim's the IP address is is the victim's IP is first, and that's the bigger one. That's what I did wrong. So this one is, and then this one is one hundred. I think I did them backwards. Couldn't ARP for the host. Couldn't ARP for a host. God. Okay, so that is probably right. So, the little one, one is the count three. The little one is the firewall, so it's going to be the whole set P. Split. One, nine, two. All right, we gotta mess with this a little bit. Let's 
so there's is and let's let's put this backwards. So arp spoof. What the heck? Okay, what does it have already? Why does that... Did I run that again? That's weird. Is there a space right there? I can't stand this stuff. did it both ways so let me look and see what's going on here so i have to put our pseudo i mean root that's let's try that. I'm gonna say I'm in root, so I don't have to put pseudo. Uh, yeah. Alright, now let's go back here and look at this command. Sure, I did that one right. Thank you. 
ね I don't think it's Etho. So, let's do this. E emo? M1? One oh six. Emo EM one. I'm gonna mess with this and see what is going on here. This is the whole part of it, man. Just troubleshooting this crap. Arp spoof. Minus I. ETH zero. Minus T. 
the victim. Uh, excuse me, and then the router. Zero, zero, one. One and one oh one. Okay. That's what I'm doing wrong. Okay, hold on. One oh one. One hundred one. One hundred one is your. And then one oh one. <laughs> All right, so this is what we do. We look at so this is not obviously that looks correct to me. So it's probably um something to do with this probably didn't forward it right or doing something wrong here maybe I gotta but what I'm gonna do is... So I'm going to copy this, right? And because I'm getting frustrated. This is a lot of time we're spending on this, but I'm going to Google this. I'm going to see if anybody ran into this problem and maybe it's something that configuration wrong. There is a router. So this is this guy entered in the same command. He's entering the same thing. He has the same problem. Let's see if they helped him solve it. Answers. Your CaliVM is running with a NAT connection through your host and the target network. That must be changed. Bridge connection to so your VM. Mine is bridged. Same network. You are using a wireless interface. So you may not able to create a working bridge connection. This is all configured correctly on here. 
do have a bridged So that didn't help me. I think I'm going to run this command and see what R minus N, see what that does. That's what it is. There you go. So Um, okay, let me show you what I just did. I, um, did I do that right though? Did I run that right scan right? Okay, yeah. Wow. Big and then little. Let's see what this. Um, Okay, so I ran that command right. Um, this is Etho, ETH zero. But see, that's the thing you got to realize. You know, and this is not. You got to troubleshoot it. This is not gonna be correct all the time, or for your system. So what I did was, I went through the because so this one didn't help well okay, well the first one didn't help me but like to my address spoof and arm spoof so this guy had a problem you put it on here and some people helped him with the question so that's what you're gonna do right and so I looked at this and this is all the same thing that I did um oh man this video is gonna end here in a second I'll have to make another one so this is gonna be a long video but this is pretty fun if you're following along and I'll show you, you know, you're going to learn how to troubleshoot stuff. So, um, he's using this on a MacBook, which is fine. doesn't matter. The commands are still going to be the same because he's on Linux. He ran this. And then. So this is the command that I used. So. ARP minus N output from the victim's host. 
So he's... So he ran this ARP in this, to make sure that he was on the right interface, or... Yeah, the interface. So he's... This was what was wrong, I think, on his. So his is on a wireless net, wireless LEN zero. So um, maybe not. I don't know if I did that right, but. This guy said 133. Yeah. So his 31. This is the command I'm using to attack the host. I don't know. I just saw this command, ARP N, right? Give me the an output. So um I type that in there to see what I'm still kind of confused but to see what um, network I'm on or what it's the interface is and it said that it was on eth ethos one see or eth one interface you know the you know the the one and one zeros on eth one, right? So I put in the command eth one instead of eth zero, and it looked like it was working, right? So, but so now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna look at this. And see what this is saying. So, um, well, not that. Um, so I'm gonna go to settings, network. Man, that's small. I can't even see that. Bridge adapter allow all port forwarding. I don't know. Anyways. I, I don't know what this is, but it's working now. So that's how I figured out. That's how you troubleshoot that if you wanna you wanna see when well, something's not working, check your commands and all that. Obviously your commands are right up here. Um then something else is going on. Do some do some re uh check, you know, see if anybody else ran into the problem. And then I saw this command to see the targets said it was like an output. And I looked at the interface and it said they were on ETH, ETH one. It's what I'm. It's what I'm reading. And so I was doing ETH zero and it wasn't finding anything. So, but now we're gonna compare those outputs and see if they look similar. So this has got that. ARP reply one hundred one. So ARP reply one dot one. Yep. And that is going to be your PF sense, right? Is that someone? Is that eight zero one seven six? So this is supposed to be saying is at. This is supposed to be my Kali Linux MAC address, right? So it ends in nine B. Let's see if that's true. You know, this is the stuff that we're going to look at. And uh, here's my Kelly. 
Let's go to system general. Let's network. I'm gonna move this because that's I can't see that at all. Why is that so I can't see? This says it man, I can't see that at all. It says it ends in 69B. Is that the one it ends in? 69B. 69B. Yeah. Okay, so it's working. So this is showing that I got an ARP reply from the PF Sense. I mean, I was sending a ARP that my PF Sense is at my Mac on my Cali box. See? So that's working. It's getting it's sending a reply, uh, ARP spoofing. So it's saying, yeah, look, you see this address here? It's coming from here, which is my Cali box and not but the Metasploitable, right? So that's working. So that's how I troubleshooted that. Run a, you got to look at other commands to get your um, more information like this ARP dash N and it gave me it said it was those guys were on this interface ETH1 instead of ETH0 so I changed my uh, ARP spoof to ETH1 so that's what we're working on remember that ETH1 on this instead of ETH0 so we're gonna have to make sure we remember that when we're running all these stuff so that looks like it ran fine so there you go learn something that's <clears throat> that's the whole part of this um from the book that's what i'm saying like a lot you, we're, okay, we're gonna go through a lot of troubleshooting trying to figure out stuff and then we're, then you're learning on the way you know you're learning what what you're doing at least that's what i think i was doing <laughs> looks like it's working so i think i'm fine all right let's move on um that might be I mean, this is a long video. We might have to stop there and then make this two, two videos. And because this is kind of going doing a lot, right? Detecting. This is going, and then it's Python. So now it's do writing a Python script. So we're gonna stop there because it worked. We spoofed it. Now we're gonna um, we're gonna stop there. We're gonna stop right here. Um, this is a long video, so we're gonna make another one later. But yeah, I got that to work. That took a minute. All right, now let's actually let's examine the the output. So let's examine the commands output, paying particular attention to the first line one. This is this line represents summary information in the packet that was sent. The summary is composed of five key parts. The eight zero sum three six is the MAC address for the Cali Linux box. Okay, that's what we just confirmed. Okay, on ours, which created the packet. The E six is the MAC address of the machine of the victims. So. E6. So this is the victims. I'm sure it's going to be matching to um, the 086 uh, is a type of field indicating that the art packet is contained within the Ethernet frame being transmitted. 0086. And that's this right here. 42 represents the total number of bytes associated with the inner ether uh, net frame. Okay, that's how you read that. The remaining section, ARP reply, ARP, ARP reply, is that blah, 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 is a summary of the ARP reply that falsely states the router's IP address is associated with the Catalytics box. So he just, so that worked. Okay. So we so now this is the next step and we're gonna uh, trick it into thinking that it's router IP router victim router uh, victim IP router IP router IP victim IP 
So now we're going to ARP spoof it into thinking that, you know, some other stuff. So that's cool. Depending on how you put it up here, it's going to spoof it either way. So the first one on this one is the victim's IP and then the router IP. And then now you're going to do the router IP and the victim IP. You're going to do it backwards so you can so you can look at their incoming traffic, right? We're going to do this on another video. And then we're going to go to a website. And it's going to show you what it's doing here. But because I'm getting kind of tired. But yeah, that worked. And But we had to troubleshoot it a little bit. But it worked. So you learned how to troubleshoot stuff. And you learned how that works. So... I'm going to conclude this video because I'm tired, but that was a completely fun and a learning experience. And that's the kind of stuff that you have to learn, right? And I don't even think I understand it fully, but it worked. <laughs> I'm sure after a while, uh, when I do more of this stuff, I'll realize what's happening. But um, for now, I have a sense of what, what's going on, what I did wrong. So hopefully you do too. All right. I'll see you on the next hack the file video i hope you had fun make sure you like and subscribe and then share these videos because they're fun videos and if you're trying to get into hacking you're not going to get any simpler um instructions anywhere else i mean because you can you know i mean this is simple and it's i explained it pretty good and, and you will learn if you keep watching these videos and following along and doing it yourself because you're going to learn how to troubleshoot as well when you have a problem you're going to learn how to troubleshoot your way out of it and then understand things as you're going and so you know i don't have any ego in in trying to you know go you know i want to be the greatest hacker and i want to you know i'm going to go get all my certifications I'm gonna do all this I really don't care I just want to know how to hack and if I know how and I know what I'm doing um, you know I can get a job in any kind of cyber field um, and then do this actually on the side and then do what I want to do because when you're working even as a pen tester you know they're going to tell you, hey, you got to do this, got to do that, you got to do this. You have to do what they, they're paying you to do, right? I mean, for the most part. When you're in college, you're learning what they want you to learn. Hey, you got to learn this, you got to learn that, you know. You're not you're not getting to do what you want to do, right? So this is me doing what I want to do. And, I, and, you know, I'll make money doing a cyber position somewhere, right? And it's stuff that's interesting. I'm learning other sides of the field, you know, like the, the protocol, I mean, the protocols, the risk management side or the framework side and, the, you know, this, the device assessment side and all that. That's cool. And then on my free time, I'll learn this stuff just for me. I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, if you want to work in the field of hacking, do this, you know, I would say do this over like hack the file and all that stuff. I mean, hack the file. I'm sorry. <laughs> Try hack me and stuff, right? Because this way you're learning how to troubleshoot. You're learning how to set this all up. You're learning how to run the commands. Uh, you're learning the ins and outs and outs and ins of this stuff by yourself. And you're troubleshooting it. Um, try hack me that's already set up for you and all this stuff. And you don't even, you know, you go into their little virtual machines, which is fine too, right? I think you're going to learn way more doing it like this and then going through through this stuff and troubleshooting and actually getting it to work. Some of this stuff you ain't going to get to work no matter what you do. I've been there. But do this stuff. Do it for yourself. You know, be your own. and Get, get a love for it is what I'm trying to say, right? Build up a love to for this. Not, not, not like... Oh, I'm going to do this so I can go get my certification so I can do this, so I can do this. And then you're like addicted to it. And you know, that's fine too. But get a love for it. Like, man, I love this when I get it working. I love when I can troubleshoot this. I love when I can, you know, and then do it slowly and just do it. Right. And then when you, 
when you've done it for a long time and you love it and you know what you're doing, you don't have to fake the funk in an interview. You don't have to fake the funk and say, oh, I can learn, you know, that's bull crap. Um, you'll be more confident. You'll be a better hacker or a better computer person and then go get a job, change your job. Go apply and say, look, this is what I've been doing for the last two years. I know what I'm doing. I, um, it's fun. I love it. You know, and then if you have to do like a demonstration where you have to hack, then you'll know how to do it. You'll know how to, oh, this ain't working. Why? And then you'll know how to troubleshoot through it. You know, you have the extensive experience of your own doing it. And, you know, that I've been told that that's the best way to go. You know, like there, I've been, you know, I watched a couple of videos on YouTube, you know, how to be a better programmer. And they say, just program, you know, have a love for programming and just keep programming and st- program and then do this and do that and then instead of practicing for the fucking or i'm sorry for the podcast for the google interview and you know and i'm doing all this and practicing and all that, why don't you just code and code and code and be a better coder and then you'd be a better coder and then you'd pass those interviews right and then you know so it's like that's what i'm basically trying to say do stuff like this get a love for it keep doing stuff like this doing stuff like this doing stuff like this for a couple years or something right so you know you have a love for it then you'll be a better hacker although you know the, the certifications all that is fine but i think this is a better better route to go because it, you know in the long run you're putting you're putting a lot of experience in your hands in your body and your mind on what you're doing right so and then learn other stuff too so you can understand what the hell you're doing and, and my rule of thumb is i have no clue what that means go research it keep moving on i have no clue what this is go research it and then move on i have no clue what this is google is research it. research it and then move on you get what i'm saying so all right, I was hacked the file. Hope you had fun and keep hacking. Bye.